Good afternoon and welcome to <laughs> Omnidog's Vault, <laughs> where today I have the Omnipups, my good friends from the Omnibus Collectors Comic Swap and Community, where I gathered them back around 2017. Uh, I believe it was around 2017. They were a collection of like-minded people who would go out, search for books for people that were rare, out of print, hard to find, and uh, find them for other people. And out of the kindness of their hearts, charge them no more than cover price. And I noticed their behavior and I said, I should get these guys together and we would... Uh, form a group and try to find books for people and uh, swap secrets and uh, see if we could form, a, uh, see if we would be stronger together than we would individually. And so today we're missing one member who has been missing in action, so he must be really busy. Uh, that's Titus Kiramana, but uh, we have today with us Kemi Jacob. Hey. There's Kemi right there, and we have Eric Fedorchik. How are we doing, everybody? And <laughs> we have Raleigh Smith. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> New, newly fathered Raleigh Smith. Yes. And speaking of puppies, I'll be right back. I gotta let the dogs out. Okay, no problemo. <laughs> but who let the dogs out? Who? Eric did. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so we have, uh, as I said, we um, got together and I've met uh, two of you in person. Uh, I've met Raleigh and Eric in person. Um, Eric and I met uh, somewhere north of Baltimore. Yeah, I can't remember the exact area. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had uh, some success looking for books. We had great success at a diner. <laughs> <laughs> because of a certain waitress. But, um, and then Raleigh and I met in, wait, where, where did we meet? We, you came up to, we were in Texas, I forget. Yes. We, uh, now I'm blanking on where we met. Did we? We didn't meet in Austin. Man. We met in San Antonio. Yes, we did meet in San Antonio. Okay, you and Beto came up and met me in San Antonio, which I appreciated. And we not only hunted for books, but we hunted for vinyl and food. And food, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> food, vinyl, and books, which uh, three of my favorite things. Well, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, there's Beto. He's on the chat. He's uh, San Antonio. He remembers yeah. we had a good time. We did. We had a great time. Yeah. And hey, Kevin. Uh, and uh, so Kemi's the only one and Titus that I haven't met in person. But uh, I physically, I think, physically, the closest to you. Yeah, right. Me and Eric are pretty close. Yeah. But yeah. I just don't go outside of Jersey that much. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't go to Jersey. <laughs> For good reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I actually had to do some work in New Jersey, so I've been up there a couple of times. But, yeah. Well, we but still need to. Uh, Kemi, Jess, and I still need to get together and hit up Philadelphia sometime because we they have, do have threatened a to amount. do that. Mm -hmm. We have threatened to do that, and as a matter of fact, my wife just met with some friends who live in Philadelphia, and she said they invited us to come up in a certain month. Maybe we could do that. So. I said, what's in it for me? <laughs> so maybe we could arrange to have some uh, book meeting time in that month when I go up there. Although she probably thinks I want to spend time with her and her friends. So I better think Typical that through. Life. I know. <laughs> so I need to think that one through. Yeah. So we help people find other books because that's pretty fun, I think, to help uh to help somebody and pay it forward and to find other books for people. But um, can you, uh, well, as just as a point of reference, um, back in, what month are we in? May, back in March, no wait, it was Eric's birthday. Yep. When When's your birthday? March 16th. Okay, so back in March, 
I put up an SOS that I needed Mad Archives Volume 3, which I stupidly slept on. I'm the one that always says, get the books as soon as they come out, then you won't be disappointed. I slept on Mad Archives 3, and lo and behold, it became a $200 book, cover price $60, $200 book on eBay, which is usually... Sometimes it has reasonable prices, but this thing was consistently $200, and I am not going to pay $200 for that book. Not only, Eric went to Baltimore and just, uh, well, Eric, you tell the story. It's your, oops, you just left. Uh, no, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm here. Yeah. Um, so what happened was uh, every year on my birthday, or at least the past couple of years, I've tried to go out and just do some comic shopping in out-of-the-way places, you know, place an hour and a half, two hours away. I'll generally take a long weekend to do so. And uh, I happened to see Jess's SOS, for lack of a better term, and was going out to a store in uh, the Maryland area that has 50% off every weekend, or almost every weekend. And looking around, and they have a ton of stuff. Like, I could have spent all day there just by myself looking for things that I wanted. And by the third or fourth time that I'd gone through all the racks, I was like, oh, yeah, I should look and see if they have this for Jess. And lo and behold, they had the Mad Archives Volume 3 still sealed for half off. So, half off. Yeah. So $250 <laughs> book he got for 30 bucks. That is that is one of the better stories I've ever heard. That I got. Not only did it take him like three hours to from my SOS to find it, but I got it for half off. Yep. And, and this can happen to you too if you get lucky enough. <laughs> of course, I posted in the Omnibros chat that I couldn't, you know, couldn't talk right now. Got to talk to the Omni pups. And Omar was like. Tell him to find that goddamn Ghostbusters book for me. <laughs> oh God! I'm like, hey, I brought well, that to you. I, I, you know, I, I told him, hey, I would tell, the, I would tell the crew, and we haven't found one yet, but we're looking. I, yeah, Some I of these harder him. to find books are just not around. Like exactly. There's lots of Marvel books in places. I, I'm sure there's an. I know Nick is asking for an annihilation. I'm sure there's some store out there that has an annihilation. But I feel like that's going to be the Marvel books are more likely to show up in stores than some of these IDW or Mad Archives books, simply because the stores don't want to hold a lot of stores don't want to hold them. Exactly. Like, t I mean, from talking to various comic store owners from my various trips, like a lot of them have said, like, yeah, we just don't carry omnibuses because it's not worth it for us to do so. Like, it's mm. just they just sit on the mm -hmm. shelf for too long. So that's why if you get lucky and find one that in maybe made the mistake of ordering omnibuses in the past and they haven't sold anything. That's where you can normally find gold. A lot of times is that they won't know that they have various stuff that's been out of print. Like you're on Kenny X forces and your Hickman's vol Hickman volume ones and stuff like that. Not that I've ever seen any of those in stores, but just as examples of some mega whales. <laughs> yeah. Well, I found the acts of vengeance, the direct market cover. And the guy was like, I have to charge you full price, full cover price for it. Even though it was sealed be he had bought it that morning for like 40 bucks or 50 bucks. He told me, oh, and I was like, no, no, I'll pay. I'll pay the full hundred for it. Cause it's very out of print and very hard to find. And somebody's going to want it. It turned out me, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but those like he's just, he probably has, he has a whole basement and I'm sure he's got tons of stuff down there, but until stuff upstairs sells, he doesn't want to bring it up. And that's the kind of story you aim for. Exactly. Yeah. And hopefully you can walk in there and you can generate some quick rapport and then just be like, hey, why don't we just go take a look at the stacks? You know? Because it, 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 at the end of the day, right, my opinion is, is it's all inventory that needs to move. And mm -hmm. A store that's not willing to move it just doesn't make any sense to me. I definitely agree on that. Yeah. When I went on the... Uh the great omnibus tour of the West coast back in 2016. I just, my strategy was to just hit as many stores as I could. Um, and and I, I was by myself for three weeks. So I had the time and I, it was Northern California and Portland that I hit. And I just hit store after store. You gotta be willing to put the shoe leather into it. And just and um, know what you're looking for, and um, 
<laughs> be willing to look at every single thing in the store. And of course, you're yep. going like this a lot of times, you know, looking at everything sideways. And, um, but it helped in Portland that I had Nate Burkholz with me because he took me to seven or eight stores and we found treasure in Portland um, because he was willing to take me to seven or eight stores. And it was a lot more fun having a buddy with me than doing it by myself. But we went to one store <laughs> that was, you had to go to a back alley to this steel door that went down these stairs. It was, it was like we silence of the lambs practically. And you went down into the, this warehouse of books, a basement warehouse, and they weren't filed or ordered very well, but we went out of there with armloads of books. He found something that was so old it didn't even have a UPC code on it that was <laughs> super rare. Um, some, uh, some Lobo book or something that was like from 1980 or so. I can't even remember, but he's like, Should, can you scan this? And I said, I, it doesn't even have a UPC code. I don't, th I, maybe I can take a picture of it or something, but um, uh, it was, you know, that's what, that's what you have to be willing to do. And, and we had to, we had to move boxes and look behind things and he had stuff behind the counter. I'm like, can you push that over so I can look at what you have behind there? And it, it was, uh, we spent about three hours in that place, just moving things from one side to the other. And I think the real secret is just be willing to drive and drive and drive and mm -hmm. go to the out of the way stores. Because the only way at this point you're going to find annihilation is if you're on a business trip to Keokuk, Idaho, and you decide to look at an LCS there because it's going to be, that's where it's going to be. You're not going to find it in uh, Washington, D.C. or New York City or any place like that. You're going to find it in some backwater place where Eric said exactly that. They accidentally ordered it and it's been sitting there for five years and he's probably got it marked down 50% trying to get rid of it. Yeah, I mean that's mm -hmm. or they or when Marvel had their liquidation, they sold. Yes, you know everyone bought them, and then they like, oh, I'm sure I could sell these after I buy them for twenty bucks. And now a lot of those liquidation books are now semi whales and uh, Infinity yeah. War. That was one of the liquidation ones, and that's or Infinity Gauntlet. Sorry, and that yeah. one that one's a whale easily at this point. And it seems mm -hmm. like the Gunslinger books are starting to become that too. Like I've noticed some buzz about them recently. And yeah, the Gunslinger's Kabuki. going for. Yeah, Kabuki's two and three are very expensive now all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But I remember seeing those. I remember seeing like uh, the Silver Surfer Masterworks. Like those things were in discount bins I saw for a year or so. And now they go for half the price of the Omni that they collect the same stuff for. But half the price of the Omni, the Omni's going for three or four hundred dollars. That's and insane. <laughs> That's don't insane. spend four hundred dollars on an Omni, people. No, don't, don't, <laughs> don't. I. It's something that uh, when I first joined the group that uh, I had, I really still adhere by, which is I never pay over cover. I refuse. Like I will pay cover, and that is the highest I will go good. on a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that good. I've I've paid over cover on some stuff, but even then, it's I'm not paying two hundred fifty dollars for a book. Uh, especially a Marvel and DC book that at some point will be reprinted. Oh, see the, the only thing I've ever paid over cover for was the colossal Conan. I paid, I think one seventy five for that mm -hmm. as opposed to what was it? One fifty. It was, was one fifty. Yeah. 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 And I traded yeah. that for a boatload of stuff. But recently. That's gonna... <laughs> I, I've paid yes. more than that for a book. <laughs> that's okay. It's a personal thing. You know, I, there's no hard and fast to... rule. It was this one. Which oh. will not be reprinted. Ever. Oh, I got <laughs> let, I let me, that on IST. Let me isolate that. Yeah, we know Kim. We know Kim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Kimmy found that on IST. How recently yeah. did you find that? That was right when they started the damage sale. Okay. Okay. I saw it. I was like, that can't be right. And I ordered it. I'm like, 
I'll get an email from IST telling me that they misdid it. Mm-hmm. And then it got picked and then it got shipped. And I'm like, they must have marked it as a paperback by accident. And nope, I got it. And there was that's, no damage on it. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. I didn't know that story. I, that, that, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, there there are some books I would say that you know, you'll have to be more willing to break rules on and whatnot for, such as, you know, Usagi Yojimbo Volume One, because it's it's a limited book, right? Marvel's not gonna <laughs> just reprint it willy nilly like they will some of their other books. I know it's Dark Horse, but Dark Horse <laughs> can't because by definition this book is limited edition. They can make a different mm-hmm. edition. It's still not this edition. And so yeah. there are literally 900 copies of this book and you know, on a good day. That doesn't even include all the ones that got damaged and whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, there are books out there that are printed in extremely limited numbers. Terry Moore's books come to mind, right? That mm-hmm. that edition that can't be reprinted. And that's and if you if that's what you're after, then then you're gonna have to kind of you know consider what you're willing to do mm-hmm. as far as breaking your rules on buying and whatnot. Well, that's actually a, a good point. Like we can pivot into the whales that we're looking for because that is one of the few books that I'm I'm not gonna say I'm gonna pay these six hundred some odd dollars that it goes no. for, but I'd be willing to go a little bit higher on uh, Umbrella Academy. Oh, it goes for six hundred dollars yeah. now. I've seen it going for sixteen hundred on eBay. That doesn't 1, mean it's sixteen hundred. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm not gonna. I'm not saying it's selling at that price, but yes. I last time I saw the highest price, it was like sixteen hundred for that thing. Wow. Well, that's. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's huh. that's one I'd that's be Netflix willing to type. spend. Yep. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's one I'd be willing to spend a little bit more on, but I don't know. Six hundred dollars is still too much for a book. That's yeah. one of the books I've never seen and. No, never I've never, owned never seen it in the wild. No. Yeah. That was one of my first trades in the Omnibus Collectors Group. What did you trade for it? Uh, actually, I, money. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was back in $1,500 No, of money? it was back in 2015 <laughs> and uh, back when the group first started and somebody put both of them up for sale. I already had volume two and I said, I... I have to get both of them. So I bought them both and I put volume two up for sale on eBay for, I don't know, some minimal amount. And that's how I got it was back in the early days of the, of the omnibus group. Yeah. I feel like it was you and John Han were like two of the people I know who got it pretty early on in the group. But outside of that, I don't think many people have that book. Well, I know that one of my first trades in the group was with Jess and both books at the time were out of print. And both books have been reprinted, and now both of them are now whales again. Oh, what was <laughs> so, that? What I we... traded you a Golden Age Superman Volume 1, and you sent me Uncanny X-Men Volume 2, The Omnibus. So both of them were shortly reprinted or new stock, and then now both of them are over 200 bucks around. I sent you Golden Age Superman? I sent you Golden Age Superman, and you sent me an Uncanny X Men Volume Two. That, wow, I don't even remember that. <laughs> I'm sure it's in my <laughs> chat somewhere, my on my messenger. I can find it, but it was years ago. Uh, let's see. I was going to say, oh, uh, I believe out the, you. Out of the four people <laughs> here, I think Jess would be the one most interested in Golden Age Superman. I'm yeah. probably the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the only one in the group, probably. <laughs> no, I'm sure there's a few people there. But uh, Riley, are there uh, any whales that you're still looking for at this point, or are you? You know, content? I have. I ha- What's that? Are you pretty content with what you have? Oh, at this uh, point? I thought you said I look intense. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, there are a couple. <laughs> um, the, the two big dogs right now are I'm still looking for Battle Chasers Anthology. Oh, which yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, because it's only like nine issues. It, but, you know, I when Joe Mad was writing that, I didn't know anything about comics. I was out of comics at that time. And then 
because uh, I played Darksiders and Joe Mad is the art director on one and two for Darksiders, and then I played his the Battle Chasers game. Um, so I, you know, I've been looking for one of those, but kind of in passing, the major well I have right now is is Silver Surfer, mm -hmm. and uh, I actually mm -hmm. passed on one because a friend of mine wanted it, and I found it for him, and some of my half price books. Um, Wizardry. skills yeah. yeah and so i yeah i sent him the I, I say hey call this store they're supposed to have one and talk to them so he called them up I had a copy they wanted 100 bucks for it and this is <laughs> not even 12 months ago um wow they wanted 100 bucks for it. it it arrived it was sealed Whoa. What? and i'm like dude you owe me i don't know what yet <laughs> but you know, we'll we'll settle Jeez. up at some point. <laughs> well, you got some good karma coming your way. Oh, you sure I hope do. So. I hope yeah. so. <laughs> but, Kimmy, uh, what Kimmy, what's a, a whale that you're on the look for? At this point, I'm not really looking for much. I I mean part of it is that I can't I shouldn't be spending money even though I do. And <laughs> every time like, ooh, that's a great deal and I buy it, and I'm like, can't bring that home either now. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I, I had all these, all the gold, all the Silver Age Marvel whales at one point, and I was like, except for X Men, the X Men Volume One, and I was like, you know, I, I'd rather just keep them in Epics because I'm afraid to open them or leave them, and then I drop them, and then mm -hmm. the value drops significantly because I've torn all the pages out. <laughs> um, but and I moved everything mostly to Epics for Marvel, and mm. but. I get them. I, I I actually won in one of the other groups, the Waffle Group. I won a Silver Surfer Omnibus. Oh, that's right. So, oh, I didn't realize you won one. Then. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I won one. So I have one. And I was like, hmm, this is nice. It sits on my shelf. It's perfect. And it sits in a box, actually. But <laughs> <laughs> eventually it'll get on a shelf. <laughs> I don't nice. know. For, for me, that's the thing. Like a lot of the whales that people are constantly looking for, I. <laughs> Some of them are good. A lot of them I feel like they just want because they're of a yeah. particularly high value. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not going to say, like, I'm not happy to have Uncanny X-Force and Astonishing X-Men and the Annihilation books, but I actually read them and enjoy them. And that's that's really the only reason I want some of those books, not because I want them just to look cool. Like, that's why I got rid of that JLA Avengers absolute, because as as much as people love it, I just don't care. Like I like George Press's artwork, but that story itself is just kind of ho hum to me. So just mm. off you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I moved. I, I had those also, and I moved them to complete collections because I'm more likely to read them again if they're complete collections. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, I actually felt that uh, I, I I don't plan to part with my JLA Avengers anytime soon, but when I read that as a part of the uh, Crisis read through where I did. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth, and then read mm -hmm. JLA Avengers, and followed that up with Infinite Crisis, and it read like a surprisingly interesting trilogy. That they mm. all fed off each other real well. So there's an interesting, just a little readathon. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Jess, I guess uh, you never answered the question. Is there a whale that you're still on the search for at this point? Um, that is a good question. I feel. Uh, Sort of as Cammy does, I feel pretty content right now. I'm actually downsizing. I've been selling off a lot of books um, because uh, we're going to be uh, selling the house in a couple years and moving to a condo. You know, my daughter's out on her own now, and the house is too much for us. And um, and I'm going to I'm getting a head start on stuff that I know I'm not going to read. Mm -hmm. So I've been selling things, but one, one thing I had, and I kind of regret selling, I do have, I sold two whales, one of which I don't regret selling, one of which I kind of do regret selling. The one I don't regret selling was something that I got a long time ago, and that's Thor number one, the Lee Kirby Thor number one. That, okay. I don't regret selling that at all. That is a ponderously written book. <laughs> That is really hard to read. Yeah. I remember that as a teenager. Of course, I'm way older than you guys are. So I read that as a teenager and a kid. And I was like, 
with these verilies and vows and mightilies and lo, there comes a hammer and stuff. I'm like, what the hell is going on in this book? <laughs> and, you know, while the artwork, of course, is great, I just said, I am just not going to read this. So I sold that and I don't regret it. But the other one that I have a little seller's regret selling is X-Men number one by Lee and uh, Kirby. Because I kind of do, even though those aren't the greatest X-Men stories, I kind of do regret selling that as um, I, I do, I would like to read X-Men from the very beginning again. And uh, just to get a feel for how it all started again. So I do sort of regret selling that. And if I came upon it, uh, I would buy it again. I, I'm not paying $400 for it or whatever no. it's going for now. No. Um, no. Yeah. To, to me, that's a candidate to get reprinted at some point. I, I just have a feeling they're just going to have to reprint it. Um, Give it a couple of years until the uh, MCU starts using mutants again. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a reprint by then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, that I, if I'm, I'm fine, I'm not jonesing for it, but if I ran across it for a reasonable price, I'd probably pick it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of the way I am with Umbrella Academy. Like I'm not actively searching for it. Like if I, if I'm out of store, I'll look for it, but at this point, there are other things that I'm interested in reading that I'll pick up. So, well, I, I think we've all got huge piles of backlogs of books to read, and I don't oh, yeah. think any of us are. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I have a whole back <laughs> shelf here. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Every time we're talking in the chat, and like one of us brings up a book we read, Jesse always seemed to be like, "Huh, I should read that at some point." Yeah, <laughs> I have. I have a whole category of I have it, but I haven't read it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and that's all I do is read comic, book, comic books. I don't watch TV. I rarely watch movies. I only watch football. I rarely watch baseball. I just, I read constantly and I never seem to catch up. Um, it's not like I don't read them and I just like buy to just go, huh, I don't give a shit. I, <laughs> I constantly read, but um, uh, I, I just don't seem to be making a dent. <laughs> Yeah, I will say that like I've always been a fan of the comic medium, um, but I don't have a lot of childhood memories. When I was a kid and I bought comics, I was buying Sonic the Hedgehog comics. Okay, so I wasn't buying I wasn't buying X Men and Captain America and stuff like that. That love all came later, and so there's some collectors out there that that buy these editions. Because they don't, they already know the story is good. They read it when they were a kid or a while back, and they want it to read again at some point. I don't know what's in these books. So a lot of these books are bought as a blind buy. Heard that they were good stories because at the end of the day, I like to read and I like to read good stories. And so if there's a book on my shelf, I intend to read it. None of it is there for nostalgia because I don't have the nostalgia for it until after I read it. So if it's in the house and I'm looking for it, it's to be read. It's not to be held on to as an investment, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. the true value in books is what's in them, not someone what someone will give you for them. Yep. So, so that's you said it better. The way I, in some ways, way it's I nicer. <laughs> in some ways, it's nicer when the nostalgia for those people, it, when you have no nostalgia or you have nostalgia that works well because – I jumped into comics right as the Clone Saga and Spider-Man was starting. Oh, and I was sorry. like, this is the best stuff ever. <laughs> and no, no, it isn't. It, mm. yeah, looking back, I couldn't, I, you read it and you're like, what the heck was this? Like, <laughs> the X-Men had just gone into like Onslaught and then you've got Heroes Reborn and it's, I was like, this is amazing. And yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> but that's my nostalgia. I was like, oh man, I love this stuff. Mm. It's like, yeah, like I mean, I, I've picked up a few Spider-Man issues here and there when Ben Riley was running around, and I was, and I would just remember thinking when I was a kid, like, who's Ben Riley? Like, I guess this comic is okay, but I thought Peter Parker was Spider-Man, and 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 so they have the Clone Saga Omnis out now, and I'm like, do I buy these and read them? Like, is it even worth it? I don't know. I've never read them. <laughs> and then you can find people yeah, who say yes, them. people <laughs> who say no, and you're just like, wow. 
I don't know. For me, like I didn't really start buying comics until uh, what was it? X Men One, the Jim Lee and Chris Claremont, like that the what the highest selling single issue of comic book ever. Like the rem- oh, it had like what was- five different copy or five different covers, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly, something and they like connected that. Connected and everything. Yep. Yeah. So like I picked one of those up when we were at a mall in Staten Island with my grandmother. And then when I got home, I discovered the comic store near us and started getting like Excalibur and Uncanny X-Men and all that. And then I just dropped out for the longest time because I just, I, I don't know, I couldn't keep up. It was just too much for me at one point. And I didn't jump back in until like Preacher and stuff like that from Virgo mm. started coming out. And that's when I went whole hog into it again. And I've had times where I cool off for a while and it wasn't until I started buying omnibuses and hardcovers that I was like, oh, this is how you collect stuff. Because I, I can't jump back into the singles game anymore. That's just too much space and too much money. Right. Yeah, when I when I was getting back into comics, four, about four years ago, maybe five, I was, you know, I got into collected editions and I was doing floppies at my LCS. And yes. basically I would just go pick up my pull box and they would just come home and sit sit there because I was reading a collected edition of some kind. And then I was like, the only reason I'm going and picking these up from my LCS and dropping 50 to $60 every few weeks is because I feel guilty because they ordered them for me and have held them for me. Yep. And so I just had to go in there and be like, it's just, you know, I'm just not going to do it anymore and go in there and quit. And it like felt like I was betraying them, but now nah, it, it's just, at least I went in there and covered my tab, basically. <laughs> I, the way I always looked at it was, like, in my 20s, I, you know, no responsibilities, living with, like, four other guys in a house, so rent's super cheap. I was spending, like, 50, 60 bucks a week on comics. And when I finally told the Joe, the owner of the local comic store, like, hey, I'm done with my box, and he got kind of crabby with me. My response was like, I've spent enough money to put one of your kids through college. I don't think you have a right to be that <laughs> angry with me about this. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I yeah I remember when I went cold turkey on comics too. I was spending a significant amount on floppies, and I just said, "This is enough." I mm-hmm. there's just no way I can read all these floppies when I've got all these collected editions, and I sold them back to the owner, <laughs> and he gave me a nice nickel for them, and uh, I <laughs> I have bought a significant amount of. Uh, collected editions from him in his various stores so it's been it's been uh he he has no animosity towards me whatsoever he's happy with me still well yeah when i go into that store now like i'm the guy they talk to when they're like hey do you think we should get this omnibus or is it just gonna Mm. sit on the shelf or like hey you know is this thing worth any money if we still have it in the store and i'm always like well let me see what the book is first and i might buy it (laughs) off you (laughs) but nine times out of ten it's just like yeah you know i the hellboy stuff like they're asking me about that and i'm like well it's good to have in the store but unless people are specifically looking for the library editions then just go with the omnibuses because their hardcovers just don't seem to sell as well Mm. and i feel like that place has gotten raided by quite a few people probably from the group who live nearby lancaster area because i know one week i went in they had a whole bunch of stuff in there and then the second week i went in it was almost all picked over (laughs) Yeah, I will say oh, I that. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kimmy. No, you go. You go. I was just gonna say, like, uh, you know, it kind of felt like a hard conversation with myself and then with the LCS owner, just be like, "Yeah, I'm done with my box." But the biggest conversation that I want to have but haven't been able to have yet is to walk in there and talk to the owner and see if he can be IST with uh, guaranteed sales or not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, I have yeah. not worked up the cover, the, the courage to go in there and be like, hey, you want to give me 51% off on these iPhones? <laughs> I don't know how IST does it. I do not know, I... especially with that free shipping over $50 in those heavy boxes and still giving you forty at least 42% off on your books. That is a remarkable business model that they are able to to do it i i have i mean that is an, an amazing business that they are running and then, and then on top of that they do other things where they have like this weekend there was a sale of three percent off and you have the omni bros code every few every quarter and randomly like you know marvel or dc or dark horse is 45 percent off yeah. plus the mm-hmm. discount yeah. i yeah i don't know 
it's I, I, it's remarkable to me that they that they are uh, they they just must sell so much and yeah. that they make up for in mass quantity what they you know charge in the bottom line that they they mm -hmm. they sell so much that that's how they're doing it i it's unbelievable i really want to visit that warehouse yeah, I, I try not to question how they do it because I feel like if I do that too much, they'll shut down. <laughs> and then I'll have nowhere to go for books. I want to say, I want to say, like, I wanna say like uh, we all know there's some markup on it, right? But it, there's also, from what I understand about Diamond, they will. Uh, there's a discount they have based on either how long you've been with them or how much you buy. Uh, and okay. At this point, IST is, it just feels like almost as big a distributor as Diamond. <laughs> it's kind of like, hey, IST, yeah. why don't you just get into distribution well, and we can get rid of Diamond. <laughs> well, I think they moved to Memphis because Diamond is based in Memphis. Yeah, I think, they, did, so, they did. Cameron sorry, told us that on that in first interview we did with them. Yes, they probably get a better discount because there's not much shipping between. I mean, for all I know, they send somebody to Diamond's warehouses to pick things up or... Probably it's something well, local. That would actually make a lot of sense. They don't isn't, have to pay isn't, UPS to do it. Isn't yeah. UPS based out of Memphis as well? Isn't that why like Zappos I or Amazon think, originally moved out there? I think FedEx, FedEx is. The FedEx. Yeah. yeah. I used to go to Memphis more. My wife's uh, parents, mom, mom used to live in Memphis or was from there, so we used to go visit her grandmother and those things. Great city, but eh, not much for me. <laughs> Now I'm like, oh, I wish I could go back to Memphis to go see IST, but it's the mecca of comic nerds. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's uh, let's talk. Let me. I well, I can't. I do not want to forget. I have to see Raleigh's um, Eisner book, the one that I'm peanut butter and jelly about. <laughs> <laughs> so th this, there's been a lot of talk recently about. Um, there's a curator's edition of a contract with God, which is a pretty well known Will Eisner book. Um, it's a really great collection. It's got some really neat things to it, but one thing it doesn't have is actually signed pages by Will Eisner because, well, Will Eisner's not with us anymore. Um, so I found this copy. It's in a bro dart, so it's got some some glare on it but this copy uh i mean it's to the point there's no barcode on it there's no um the, the isbn is printed on the outside this book was 25 dollars when it was originally printed with the isbn right there on the like where the upc normally would be uh mm -hmm. it's it, this particular copy was printed by kitchen sink and Kitchen Sink was the second company to actually um, print this story in a hardcover collection, from what I understand. Um, so this printing, it's the first printing from Kitchen Sink from 1985. God, you were um, just dragging this out for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> You're killing me. But the, the biggest thing is right here. This is what Jess wants. This is number 56 with Will Eisner's actual writing of his own name. Can you lift it, lift it up just a little bit? Okay, there we go. Oh, wow. 56 of 600. Holy guacamole. And so I went into a store, and there was a, there was a price tag on this thing. And I thought it said $10, and they were running a 40% or 50% off sale. I was like, oh, okay. You know, this book's about 8 bucks, you know, something like that online wasn't signed copy i was like okay that's good enough supporting the lcs you know not bad go up to the counter and they're like oh that's a hundred dollars and i'm like what <laughs> and it's like oh yeah but it's got will Eisner's signature and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> and then it even has an introduction in here from denny o'neill who is uh the question fame but so it's 30 percent off a hundred dollars uh, I think it was either 40 or 50 so this book was, I want to say this book was $63 after tax. That's, wow. I, and any idea what it goes for on the secondary market now? 
Um, there, the, number one, number one, I think it's number one that I sent, I sent just the other day, uh, but it signed out to an individual to a, what, what did we say it was? Grover? No, no, that's, that, that's what just wants. It's not Grover. It, it's Wayne. It was Wayne. 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 Yeah, that's so it. Made out, made out to Wayne and it's like $150 or maybe that, it was more than that. But was okay. that the same book with his... Uh, out of the 600? Yeah, it, I think it was, it was number one out of the 600. Oh, all right. Okay. But he just happened to have a personalized copy. Yeah, he had it made out to him. Okay. That's crazy. Oh, for Which... some reason, that just makes me really nostalgic. I don't know why, but <laughs> man, makes me really nostalgic, that Will Eisner book. Because that is right when I loved Will Eisner, right when I started collecting, seriously collecting in my teenage years. And that just takes me right back. His pen and ink stuff was amazing. Yeah, and so I haven't, I haven't read this one yet. It's, a, it's almost to the top here. <laughs> slowly working its way up <laughs> yeah it, it kind of got moved up there pretty quick so. I took it out of my library and read it and it's great <laughs> it's just yeah. like his expressions his facial features the backgrounds it just he was a master <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason that there's an award given out with his name on it <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly yeah. Um, so, um, speaking of favorite books, what are some of the favorite books in each of your collections? Uh, not necessarily the rarest uh, or the hardest ones to find, but uh, your or they could be. But what are some of your personal favorite books that you guys have? Who wants to go first? Yeah, you can go first. All right. Um, for me, it's there's actually two of them. Uh, one of them is uh, Astonishing X Men. Good the, choice, uh, Jess Whedon. And yeah, I know it's out of print and all that, but it was a book that I read the second or third or fifth time after I'd gotten robbed on my front porch. Oh shit! Yeah, it was something I spent oh. the next day when I just hold up in my library, just not not dealing with anybody, decompressing and all that. And it was a huge bomb on me when I was reading it. I don't know why it's not like there's any themes in there that deal with anything like that, but just that book was a great lighthouse for me when I, I needed something to kind of take my mind off of things. God, that is scary. Jesus. Yeah. Well, it later on just some subtext of that story or not subtext, but a uh, side story to that is that the two kids that did drop me were using a fake gun and one of them got deported and the other one is now very busted for being 13 years old and trying that. Um, anyways, oh. Yeah, that's, yeah, and I also good, I, guess. I also got back all of the uh, money that they were demanded to pay. Um, nice. Yeah, the, uh, good. yeah. Well, that took like two years, but hey, whatever. It, I still got it back. Justice was served. Yeah, yeah. It's better than other ways it could have been. So. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, it could have been like uh, uh, Paul Dini's. Uh, oh God, Dark yeah. Knight. Yeah. Well, it's it's something I, I said, you know, when I talked to people about it after it happened. It's like, I'm not a gunsmith by trade, so I can't tell if it was a real gun or not. I don't think it was, but I didn't want to find out. No. So yeah. I no. just I just gave him my wallet and my phone and my cigarettes, which actually were ended up what was the thing that identified them. Because a 13 and a 16 year old aren't normally ones who would smoke American spirits. <laughs> um, but the other book in my collection that is one of my faves and I will never, ever, ever get rid of is actually The Invisibles Omnibus because that was the first omnibus I ever got and it was one that my wife bought me. Mm. So it's, I mean, I love that story. I love Grant Morrison. He's one of my favorite writers. But yeah, it's the sentimental value on that is far too high for me to ever get rid of that thing because even I don't even want to downgrade it to the single deluxe issues or deluxe collections because I in a weird way, I feel like the book is a metaphor for what the entire story is. It's big and cumbersome, but once you get into it, you don't notice how big and cumbersome it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is very, very large and very, yes. very heavy. Isn't it still the largest omnibus that's out there? Is it still bigger than Fourth World? I just remember. Fourth I don't World know. Was I'm not sure about Fourth World. Like I, I, I think Colossal Conan is like maybe fifty or sixty pages less than the Invisible okay. Omnibus wow. is. I think Why the Last Man may end up being the biggest yeah. Omnibus ever. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, that's that's it for me. I don't know what anybody else got. I just I just wanted to point out that that uh, we are presenting a lot of life lessons to all of our viewers here, including <laughs> that if you're going to smoke cigarettes, make sure it's not when anybody else smokes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Be unique. Exactly. Right. Yes. 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 <laughs> I I identify through the things that are giving me cancer. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> Um, so I guess by the books that I, I'm going to pick two as well. I mean, I got to Usagi Yojimbo volume one hardcover from IST, as I said earlier. Yeah. And at the time it was like, Oh, it's a rare book. I want to read it. Everyone always says it. And I read the first book and I was just, okay. And I went out and bought the next six hardcovers right away because I was like, I, they sold me. I'm done. I don't need anything else. And I just read that. And I just read all and I could read, I could pick single chapters and read with different kids. And every kid I read it with, I have three kids. Each kid has a different, there's a different thing they're getting out of it. And they're pointing out things. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. But it's like there's so many levels working, and I'm never getting rid of those. And each one of the hardcovers comes signed and sketched by Stan, Stan Sakai. And it's just, it's just amazing. That's so, awesome. That's that, and I would say my the only other book that I will never get rid of is the Thor uh, Simonson Omnibus because mm. before it got reprinted, I sat there and that was like the one thing I was like, I'll pay. Should I pay double cover or two and a half times cover price for it? I don't want to. Maybe it'll get reprinted. And then it got reprinted. I was like, um, it's mine. I'm taking it, <laughs> <laughs> and I got it. And that's it's sitting there. I have it. And when my son gets a little older, I'm sure he'll enjoy it. He was like, I love, I love Thor. And I'm like, I don't think you like the language that they're going to use because it's still the old Thor. It's not as bad as the Kirby Lee Thor volume one, but it's still not for a seven and six year old to no. read, but, <laughs> but cause they're just going to get bored with it. But like some of the splash pages on it, it's just from beginning to end, the, the whole build is so great. The whole war, you have beta Ray bill shows up and, Oh. Uh, those are mine <laughs> what about you Raleigh well I will have to echo Thor Simonson when I was getting back into comics a bit I was in grad school so this was a while back and uh, I was running long tests um, for my thesis you know doing experience, ex- experiments and whatnot. of course I didn't have to pay attention to them so I figured out way too late in my collegiate career that the library actually has good things that I might check out. So I started to check out comic books. Mainly I was just checking out random Batman stuff. Um, but and then I was, I was, I was reading an article. I just finished playing, um, ultimate Alliance two on my 360. And so I was reading this article and it was like, if you want to get into Thor, you know, ahead of the movies and stuff like that, here's some great places to jump in. And they're like, hey, you could go buy this this Thor omnibus that's got some of the best stories ever written, and it's not too expensive and whatnot. So I, basically, either Thor or Brubaker's Captain America Volume 1 were my first omnibus in my collection. Either... They're both one and two as far as when they arrived. I don't remember which one is which, though. Um, so for all intents and purposes, um, you know, Simonson Store is the first omnibus in my collection. Uh, so really my exposure to this brand new collected edition medium uh, in such a beautiful package, right? Um, and so I read through that, loved every minute of it. Simonson's willingness to just not care about physics or anything. I mean, you have Scourge with machine guns, just like in <laughs> in Ragnarok, and you have, you know, Beta Ray Bill coming out of nowhere, just like you were saying. And and Simonson, golly, he his style hasn't even changed. Like you could tell when Simonson's working on something, like it's the exact same sketch. So he he does it the same way as he did then, and it still looks great. And for Simonson to both write and draw that comic is just mind-boggling to me because barely anyone does that anymore. 
Yeah. And he still does it that way. Like, that's still the way he does it. Um, and so Simonson actually visited my local con here. And I went to that con with the sole purpose of lugging that damn book around so I could slap it down on his table. <laughs> and it was the only one he had seen all day, his whole time there at the con. And he was like, you know, dude, did you like it? And I was like, dude, it was awesome. <laughs> and Simonson is one of the sweetest yeah. guys. And he, he, he tours with his wife, who, yep. if you don't know, wrote a bunch of X-Men. So there's plenty of stuff she'll sign, too, if you have it. You know, Louise mm -hmm. Simonson. Um, and she's there. They don't take money for signatures. They ask that you donate to Heroes Initiative or Comic Code or some, something like that. All they do is take donations. It's for it's, awesome. um, it's for uh, health insurance for yeah. uh, uh, artists and writers in the comics industry. Yeah, That's great. So Although it's ridiculous that they have. Same to with do Mark Wade. Yeah. 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 In some ways you'd think they would have. Somebody would have set up like you know independent pension plans or something to pay for some of this stuff for artists and writers, and, but they nope. they never did it. No, I know it's a it's shocking. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got I actually have too many books that won't leave my collection, <laughs> mainly because if I go out of my way to have an artist, writer, producer, whatever put their signature in my book, then, you know, they might as well make it out to me because it's not, it's not going to go anywhere. Like, mm -hmm. so I, I recently met Jim Lee. Um, I guess it was not recently, about last year when we had the hurricane after that math. Um, he signed both of my Jim Lee X-Men Omnis. He, he and Dan DiDio signed my Infinite Crisis Omnibus. And then, the reason I'm not upset about the Hush Omnibus is because I had Jim Lee sign my Absolute Hush, which was, you know, whether you like it or not, one of my favorite Batman stories. I like it. <laughs> it's, one of, it's the first Absolute I ever got. I like it a lot. So yeah. I saw them dumping all the Absolute price. The Absolutes were like out of print, high priced, and then as soon as they announced the Omnibus, the price dropped, and I got one for like 35 or 40 bucks the yeah. Absolute Hush. And then all of a sudden the price jumped back up again, and I'm like, no, I'm going to keep this. I'm, oh, I'm Hush okay was out of print for a while. I think so. Oh, it was out of print. You know, I didn't even I didn't even connect the dots when I saw it, like because I have a save search on eBay for absolutes, and mm -hmm. when I saw Hush kept popping up at a really good price, so I'm like, why is this happening? And then I saw the news about the omnibus, and then I saw the news about getting canceled, and it jumped back up, like you said. Yeah. So missed that boat. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, and then I had uh, my copy of Colossal Conan, um, as seen here. Um, <laughs> I actually got through the group through one of our greatest members of all time, uh, Mike Noah. Oh, uh -huh. the greatest guy ever. He's so nice. Such a great guy. He is, he is. And so one day, I was like, you know what, I kind of want this book. It, it, it gets great rave reviews. You know, I don't even know if I recently watched the movie or something like that. But I was just looking for something that wasn't big, too. Um, and so I just posted on the group. It's like, hey, just throwing this out there. Looking for Colossal Conan. And I don't even think it was two hours before Mike was like, hey, I got one. You know, throwing it back. So, you know, he was like, okay. You know, hey, you know, I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. If if it shows up in okay shape and you and you want it and everything, then just let me know and then you know you pay me that, pay me after that. Um, so he just sent it to me, no money tra transferred or anything. Yeah, just sent the book to me. Jeez. It arrives. Of course, it's immaculate. And I start to try to message him, and he's just not responding. Like <laughs> usually it's the other way, but mm -hmm. you know it's like I'm I'm trying to give you money, bud. Like <laughs> let me do that. Um, and of course, he, he had a lot going on at the time, so I re eventually I reached out to Jess, and 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 Jess got him to get in touch with me. And the guy was like, "You know what? Just I want you to have it." 
Like, wow. You know, I like what you do in the group. You know, I think you're, you know, a great member here. And I want you to just kind of keep up the spirit and, you know, the heart. And, and so it's one of the drivers that I have is, is, is somebody gave me this book with, you know, no strings attached outside of, you know, basically be the change. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons why I love helping people is because, you know, I have received some great help. And I want to push that forward and try to help people find the books, you know, that, that they're looking for too. So I will happily tag on to that. Mike Noah is easily one of the greatest human beings I have ever talked to. I got his number on my cell phone. Um, we've talked on the phone before. Um, he, I've probably found I'm guessing, counting the Great West Coast trip, I probably found around 250 books for people in the group at cover price that are out of print and hard to find. I'm not saying that to brag. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm saying I'm saying that because Mike Noah made me what I am today through his actions, exactly how Raleigh is saying it, because Mike does what he does. Send he, I, I would post uh, um, something and say, does anybody have this book? And he has sent me probably 10 whales Jeez. free. That's awesome. I mean, and it's going to be one of my books that I'm going to list here as, uh, wait, what are we talking about again? Our favorite? What we'll never our favorite get, books? Our favorites. Our favorites, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to go off on a tangent about how great Mike is, but yeah, he's definitely, um, I mean, he's just, and he, all he says is pay it forward. He says, uh, our, uh, all I say is uh, lift each other up. That's his lift other people uh, up. Um, that's our message. He and Amber, his wife just say, lift each other up, brother. And I'm like, Okay, this started back in like late 2015, and I said, I'm gonna do it. And so I started getting books for people, finding books for people, getting gifts for people. I'm like, Mike Noah told me to do it, I'm gonna do it. And that is exactly the credo that I'm following. And Mike Ashley, too, he's another guy uh -huh. mm -hmm. that is um, whose lead I follow, who has sent me stuff and always is up for a good trade or sends me gifts or something and is crazy, super friendly, great guy, salt of the earth, wonderful person. Um, those two guys are, I don't know how you can get to be a better human being than those two guys. Um, but Mike sent me my all-time favorite book, which I would uh, would be the first thing that uh, I would never get rid of. And this is where I get my reputation from. And uh, and Raleigh's going to laugh because it's naughty and nice, the, the uh, good girl <laughs> art of Bruce M. I make no apologies for it. I love that book. And it is super hard to find, super rare. But he just sent that book to me. I just said, I like that. I don't even remember. This must have been three, four years ago when I got it. But he just sent that to me. It's absolute size. It's uh, the good girl art of Bruce Tim. It's amazing. And um, it's one of my favorite books. And that's one of the few books I was able to rescue from the flood of 2017, it was down on a bottom shelf. And as oh, the water geez. came pouring in, I went Lah! and grabbed it and <laughs> That's cool. other stuff. But I saved that book. Um, I did. I was able to save several others, but a lot of things got lost. Like my new mutants that I painstakingly put together one through seven, but um, that uh, and absolute justice. I love absolute justice. Uh, by DC Paul Kruger and Alex Ross art. I give that a read like every six months. Um, I love that story. Um, I always forget what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always reading going, what are these guys up to again? I forget. And then it gets to the, to the 
So, so the main part, I'm going, oh, yeah, and it's got that great Alex Ross art in it. It's such a great story. It's got beautiful art, and I love that. Um, I love the story, and I love the art. And then I'm going to cheat and do a third book, and that is the absolute of the Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams Green Lantern Green Arrow run. Because that meant so much to me as a teenager. I used to, I picked it up off the newsstands, Green Lantern, Green Arrow 76. I was shocked to see Green Arrow shooting apart Green Lantern's lantern on the cover. And I said, what is going on in this issue? And I opened it up. And there's this amazing art in it. And I paged through it. And here's uh, Green Arrow saying you know all the social consciousness stuff about how oh okay i know which ones you're talking about yeah and and, and this black guy saying you work for the blue skins and you're helping the orange skins but you don't do anything for the black skins on this planet and what do you have to say to that and green lantern says i can't say anything and so Green Arrow, that's the start of uh, like a 20 issue run of uh, the, like the beginning of social consciousness to comics. And it meant a huge thing to me as a teenager because the art, which was uh, inked by Dick Giordano, which really tightened up Neil Adams artwork um, to an amazing degree and the great writing by Dennis O'Neill and it's an absolute format and it is, uh, I don't know, it, it meant the world to me. And I think that uh, those would be the three books that I could never let go. Um, and I see a book over there that I bet I'm going to put on eBay. I bet I'm never going to read it. <laughs> I, am, I am in that mode. I bet I'm never going to read that goddamn thing. And <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I have it. I'm going to get rid of it. What is it? Is it? Uh, I'll tell you after the chat's over. <laughs> is, is, it, is it a softcore edition of Manar or something like that? Like, no, I don't need this. There's no benefit to this. Uh, it's something that will help my bank account. That's uh, Giant size X-Men number one. <laughs> <laughs> that's in a safe deposit box that's where it should be <laughs> right exactly um have you guys um recently found any books for other members re uh recently i know that um it's not Ven omnibus number two i already sold that joe chip I sold that to a guy in the group. <laughs> Good call, though. <laughs> That's a book I placed the order for and immediately regretted. Why am I buying Venomous <laughs> 2? What the oh. hell am I thinking? As soon as it came in, I said, I, and I said in the Omnibros chat that I sold it, I don't know, I think it cost me $60, and I sold it for 40 to a guy in the group. <laughs> and I said in the Omnibros chat, that, that's a $20 mistake, that, uh, and I'll learn from that lesson. And Omar said, I've been through a divorce, pal. $20 is a cheap mistake to make. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's not been on. <laughs> Have you guys uh, recently found anything for anybody in the group? Um, I think when I went... Uh, Two or three weeks ago, I went to a few shops, and it was just getting to the point where Fables, the few vol the deluxe volumes of Fables were starting to get hard to find. Right. And I found people had posted if anybody wanted a four and a seven, and somebody took me up on the seven. And honestly, I, I feel bad because I don't remember who it was, but somebody messaged me, and I sent it out that day. I just don't remember who, and I... I have too many messages from people. I can't remember which one. Yeah, find it. <laughs> I just gave you another order for it. <laughs> Not for me, yeah, so but for I, a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. I sent that person a message saying, I think there's a shop that might have it. Oh, but good. There, but that shop is does free comic book day today. So to call today, Ooh. you're never going to get through. Oh, yeah. So, but to call tomorrow, he'll, he'll add. The guy is very nice. He ships everything. 
I, I love this shop. I just wish it was less than two hours away from me. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I don't go very often, maybe once a year, but. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for me, I'd same thing with Kemi. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, it was somebody who was looking for uh, Big Damn Sin City. And uh, the store, one of the stores I'd been to on my great birthday travels, um, they had a bunch of stuff on the back wall. Nothing that I was super interested in. I saw Big Damn Sin City and was kind of like, eh, eh. It had been there from the year before when I had gone. Oh, wow. So I was just like, I, I don't really need it that much. Like, I like Sin City, but not enough to want to own that book. So I just messaged the guy the name of the store and the number, or at least I just I took a screenshot of the picture that comes up on Google with all that and told him, <laughs> hey, it was there last time I was there, which was like three months ago. Let's give them a call, see if they still have it. I remember but, that. Yeah, mm-hmm. outside of that, I can't really think of anything I found for anybody recently. Mm-hmm. How about you, Raleigh? Any, anything come to mind recently? You know, I haven't dug anything up personally recently just because i haven't been able to go to too many places well you got Uh, a new baby in the house so it's a little (laughs) harder for you to go out now i mean i've helped a few members by buying stuff they were so no um (laughs) uh, recently the i do my part as well yeah (laughs) (laughs) there's uh there's been a a guy in the group who has kind of had a rough time of it and um started talking with him and he's a great guy and he was looking for the brew baker captain america set and like after he said that i want to say like the next week or whatever two different sets went on sale in the group and of course you know i just like, hey dude you know there's two sets here this one wanted i think i don't even know who was in our if one of them was in our group i don't know if the other one was well one of them wanted 500 and, I, and he was like no I, I wouldn't do that and then the other one was like four fifty, and 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 it was Doug McAdams was selling it, who was another great guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you ever deal with him, he's super nice. Mm-hmm. He is a good guy. And uh, but the the guy I was talking to was was like he couldn't pay immediately, right, due to situations that were going on. And I had just recently come into some PayPal because Buffy books went off the scale, and I was oh. like. Well, I'll buy them, and I'll just send them to you, and then, you know, we'll settle up whenever. So I, I bought those books from Doug, and I just told I had Doug send them to the guy. And I was like, eh, you know, and I was just thinking to myself, if he runs off with four and fifty bucks, four and fifty dollars, okay. Well, you know, it wasn't like four and fifty dollars out of my paycheck per se. You know, I it's just kind of some money I made off some books, and so I just I basically I helped that guy get books he really wanted, and you know we've since settled up, so just no worry. But that's, that's awesome. Kind so of it's like, what would Mike with. Noah do? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mike Noah would have just bought the books, send them to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I feel like. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, that's kind of kind of what I've done recently. A lot of the in search ofs recently in the group have been stuff that is going to be sadly woefully hard to obtain. Yeah. Um, I mean, every other day there's somebody saying, "Hey, I'm looking for Colossal Conan," and I'm just like, "Man, mm-hmm. I wish I could find one." Well, like we've had a lot of new members all of a sudden. Yeah. There's a lot of Colossal Conans. There's a lot of Annihilation. There's a lot mm-hmm. of Hickman Volume One of yes. of both Avengers and Fantastic Four. Yeah, and every and I'm always like, mm, I don't think anyone's going to be getting those out. And yeah. yeah, and then the other thing is like, you know, it's kind of like not to be rude or a jerk or anything, but it's also kind of like get in line. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, even if I, I'd have to find like 17 before I could willingly like <laughs> feel okay with giving this guy that's been here two days one over somebody who's been here since you know the day after i showed up kind of thing yeah well and and something like specifically with hickman's avengers like how did people not realize that maybe they should pick that up when it comes out because that's after the way hickman event or fantastic four went like (laughs) the minute i saw avengers was coming out in omni form i'm like yeah i need to buy that right away like Mm. uh, i made that mistake 
<laughs> right now, right? You can come back and you can quote me on this later, right? Hickman's returning to Marvel. Disney mm-hmm. has rights to Fantastic Four. Don't buy Fantastic Four Hickman Volume 1 for a crazy price. Don't do it. Just be patient. We'll see. Because, I mean, they are releasing the complete collections right now. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know. I, I feel like reprints of stuff that's that recent aren't quite as common. But I'm, who knows? I haven't been paying attention as much as I should have. Kemi, did I find you Hickman's Volume 1? Yeah, we might have lost him. Uh, yeah, he seems to be off for a second. Oh, are you frozen? Uh, well, no, that's his away picture, I think. He says his phone died. Oh, okay. Well, there oh. you go. One down. We lost one. <laughs> <laughs> what am I at? I'm at 46%. Y'all are stuck with me for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm at 67 <laughs> and I'm plugged in, so I'm going nowhere. Well, we can stay on for probably another 10 minutes before my wife gets home. Um, how about um, favorite writers and artists right now? I, I've been on a real Jason Aaron run recently. Ah. Like, I, I finally got to read all the Thor stuff that's currently available after I stupidly bought up uh, un, bought Unworthy Thor. Now finding out it's going to be in volume three. <sighs> I know, me too. I got stuck yeah. with that too. Yeah, and there's no way I'm going to unload that book. I mean, it's like a it goes for like six, seven bucks trade wise. Um, but yeah, Jason Aaron has been just great so far because I jumped from that into uh, the Wolverine run, and just I just finished up uh, Wolverine and the X Men this morning and loved it. It was so good. Ah, uh, yeah, I want to read that. You I want should. To read. Yeah. I can see it right behind you there, even though it's not in the right <laughs> order. Like... <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Like, as soon as I came down, I said, "Oh, apparently these aren't in the right order." <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, outside of that, like he's been the he's been the biggest like new surprise for me. I mean, I know he's good, but this is I'm really pleasantly surprised by how much I like his stuff. Um. Yeah. And if uh, have you read his Doctor Strange? I have that on on backup because I'm now jumping into Fables because I have oh. I have volume one through like thirteen or twelve something like that. So <laughs> that was a very loud dog. <laughs> yes. That's kind of scary. Um, his Doctor Strange is so great. It's so funny and so fun and just really great with great art. I highly recommend it. Looks like a ton of fun, and I really like. Uh, how do you pronounce the artist's name? Is it uh, Baclo? Bacalo? I always I always just say Bacalo, but it could be yeah. Bacalo. I've I've liked his artwork since God back in the '90s when I was buying comics, if not early 2000s, because that was when I think he really got his big start, if I remember correctly. Hmm. But yeah, outside of that. Oh, we lost your audio. Oh, we there we go. There we go. Sorry, I accidentally <laughs> muted it because I was trying to uh, cut down on the amount of Otis's barking that you heard. Um, but yeah, I was saying Fables. I'm reading like I've started reading that. And oh, you're going to go into a marathon of that? Yeah, I've had the I've had multiple volumes for a while. And just the zeitgeist of the group recently being like, Fables, it's out of print. You need to buy it. I'm like, I guess I should finally read these. <laughs> and among other things. Uh, how about you, um, Raleigh? Uh, any favorite writers or artists right now? Um. My favorite writer has been pretty consistent, um, and that's Ed Brubaker. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've I've got the whole cap run. I think I've got every oversized hardcover of his that has come out. I just recently read both volumes of Fatal and really enjoyed that. Um, So the the guy that he always partners with. John Phillips. uh, yeah, Sean Phillips. I've got a real love for Sean Phillips. Oh, you're back. Oh, you're back. Okay, back. good. No. So, um, yeah, Eddie, Eddie B., as I lovingly refer to him, is kind of one of my favorite writers. And uh, I, Real quick before you go uh, 
too much further into other writers you like, what did you think of the end of Fatal? I wasn't super impressed with the ending. Everything else I really liked, but the ending, I was just kind of like, uh, it just fell off for me. Um, you mean like the ending, the ending? Yes, like the, the very, closure to it? Yeah, the closure to the story. I would say that I expected it that way, kind of based on just the the way noir films kind of seem to turn out. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i i get that it just i don't know something about it just didn't wrap up the not the way i wanted it but it just didn't wrap up in a way that was satisfactory to me like everything yeah. leading up to that i was so into like the the vaguely cthulhu-esque stuff well not even vaguely mm-hmm. the blatant cthulhu-esque stuff that was being hinted at but just mm-hmm. something about the ending just didn't hit right for me and i don't know what it was yeah no i i, I could see that my biggest issue with fatal overall was the he he set out to write a story concerning the femme fatale archetype, mm-hmm. right? Which from the more of the femme fatale's perspective, mm-hmm. and it still somehow didn't seem to manage to make the femme fatale the main character. Yeah, yeah. Right? I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, and so like. I get what he was trying to do. I don't feel that if that was his sole mission, that it was successfully executed mm-hmm. just because she, she didn't feel like the main character ever really. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. I didn't yeah. even think about until you just mentioned it, but yeah, no, that's yeah. But overall, you know, um, it, it's a good horror story. Um, it's fun. It's got its dark points. It's got its light points. Um, and it, I think it, to me, it wrapped up, you know, as, as expected, especially for kind of the noir genre never really being happy anyways. Um, but that, that's how I, I interpreted it. And then, um, I don't know if you know, Ed, Ed Brubaker actually doesn't get on social media. And so this is just a, a an aside really, but yeah, he, he, he deleted his Twitter and everything, but he runs a, um, a newsletter, an email newsletter where he talks about all his new stuff where, you know, how we know how kill or be killed is going to be collected coming up. And, and he restarted criminal with new stories and stuff like that. Um, but I, I, I read, uh, Parker Martini edition, which is Darwin cook, right? It's not even Ed Brubaker, it's Darwin cook, but it, it's Darwin took these Parker books from back in the day and was working with the actual author of the novels. Um, And so he was rewriting them and adapting them to a graphic novel medium. And he was blowing the authors, the Parker author's mind on what, what uh, Darwin was doing. And of course, sadly Darwin passed away before he could continue the project. Um, So we have the martini edition, which does not have all of the, books that he no. was planning to do Missing two of them yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um but reading those stories i had this i skipped over all the front matter and the back matter because i was like no spoilers but reading the stories i got this distinct noir feel this special style in there and i'm like this feels like something ed brubaker would like then i go back and i read the front matter and ed brubaker darwin cook are like collaborating on this thing and so I go and I, and I just, I just shoot Ed an email in response to one of his, his uh, newsletters. I'm like, Hey, do you have any interest in picking up Darwin Cook's Parker project? Like go ask Bruce Tim if he wants to do the art on this, which <laughs> Bruce Tim is super close. I guess not super close, but it has a distinct feel, but also it's similar to what Darwin Cook does. And I was like, just, you know, like, you know, is there anybody you'd partner with, like Bruce Tim or somebody who does that style or whatever, and just pick up the book? And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, he, he responded by literally copying my question into his next newsletter and responding to me and giving That's me the awesome. shout out. And I was like, dude, he answered me. Yeah. <laughs> he nice. sadly said no, but he answered me. <laughs> is all he said was no? No, no, he said, you know, that he would never dream of picking up Darwin Cook's 
project because he just can't. Like, there's mm-hmm. no way to replace Darwin on that. And that um, apparently Darwin wasn't planning to do too many more, if any, um, after what he had already done. Um, but yeah, he just, I guess, couldn't in good faith or in conscience, you know, do that. <laughs> Which was disappointing, but totally understandable. Yeah, totally understandable. Have you read um, My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies? No, it's on my shelf, though. It's pretty great. <laughs> it's yeah. really great. It's yeah. amazing. Is it I read a that. trade, or is it a few trades? Uh, uh, it's, it's a single book. Single book. Okay. Yeah, OGN. Yep. Um, but yeah, I've read his books of Doom, which was a nice Doom storytelling. Fade Out is amazing. Fade Out is and, amazing. Uh, yes. I'd recommend, if you haven't read Fed Out, F- Fade Out and you love cinema at all, Read Fade Out and read the essays. One of Brew Baker's greatest things he does in his books is that he has people come in and, um, or he, he at least presents essays that d- kind of describe uh, the conceit of what he was trying to do, the message he was conveying, mm-hmm. giving you the background for the story itself. And just, I mean, there's four essays in the Fade Out. One talks about how starlets were mistreated. Another one talks about uh, like racial injustice in early Hollywood. There's another no, one that's sorry about to interrupt. I'm just yeah. going. I gotta leave. So I'm just saying goodbye. Oh, oh thanks oh. for joining. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. All right. Thanks. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay. Later. Take care. Uh, okay. Um, there's, there's another one in there that was really oh the trust busting of the early Hollywood you know, studios and distribution rings and whatnot. And it's just super interesting stuff that's kind of off the cut, like off the beaten path as far as information and whatnot. Um, And even in like Fatal, where he starts talking about some of the early horror Gothic writers and how, you know, that kind of stuff came to be just, just great stuff. So I always recommend picking up Brubaker books because they're good stories. And then some of them are educational. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Those essays are remarkable. Uh, I totally agree. Um, I, I just, I'll agree with you on Ed Brubaker. He's my favorite writer of all time. Um, and uh, it's no secret that I'm an alcoholic in recovery. Um, with any luck, at the end of this month, I'll have 11 years. Oh, and wow. Awesome. Congratulations. This, yeah, well, thanks. Um, and so this book, My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies, really um, hit uh, a certain place in my heart because the girl in it really does a remarkable job of romanticizing junkies and the whole um, process of uh, meetings um, uh, that you go to and um, the um, even even though she's dealing with drugs uh, I get I understand the similarities between drugs and alcohol and what you go through uh, between both of them enough to uh, get the romanticizing that goes through uh, both of them. Um, It's, it's so great and so spot on um, how she romanticizes the whole process of um, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, um, um, the process that a junkie goes through acquiring the drugs and, um, you know, applying the drugs into your system and the, the effect, the cause and effect. And, um, just, the uh, it's just remarkable. And the whole, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do a review on this book, uh, eventually, uh, sometime this week, but, um, I mean that's obviously not what the whole book's about. It's it's a it's um, a, a a little bit of crime. It's more about rehab and romance and a little bit of crime. And I can't really reveal too much more than that without giving away anything. But it 
it takes you places you don't expect it to go. It's classic Brubaker and Sean Phillips, and it's um, <laughs> Cycle Cleveland, shut up. Uh, he's saying, are you meaning to say she's romanticizing? And I probably said it 16 times. Um, uh, she, um, it's, it's a remarkable book. For such a short book, it gets a fully fleshed out story in, in such a short amount of time. It's, it's, um, it's a great book. And I'm looking forward to bad weekend that Beto Rios said, um, uh, earlier that, uh, bad weekends coming out soon. And I, and I, I guess that's taken from the pages of criminal that's coming out right now. Yeah. It's, uh, one, of, it's like the first arc, Four, four or six issues, I think. Mm. It, they, uh, I guess Image, or I think he's publishing with Image right now, said that it was so good that they wanted to get it printed and out there ASAP again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good. Good for me. Lucky me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I, I talked about the, the, the essays in Brubaker's stuff, and yeah, I know he puts a bunch of, like there's an essay like in every single issue, like uh, Cycle was saying, I just I just can't get single issues now. And so I, <laughs> I hope that at least the best ones are printed in whatever collected edition he does. But I may have to just eBay those singles or something. Mm. Well, we've been on for an hour and a half, and we've covered a lot of territory, my friends. And I feel like we are friends because uh, I, I met you both and I haven't met Kemi yet, but we chat so much and we've shared so many personal stories. It does feel like we're good friends. And so definitely, I, oh, I yeah. definitely feel like we're buds. And um, this has been a good talk. I, I think we've, uh, we've shared some of our secrets on how to find some books. And we've talked about comic books a lot, which everybody likes when we talk about comic books, since that's pretty much my entire life. <laughs> well, I can come back again. I got more stuff to talk about. <laughs> Good. Well, we can make this a, a regular feature. Yeah, I can just add it to the list of uh, other things that I do online. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good. Uh, Again, this has been uh, my friends, the Omni Pups. We had Kemi Jacob with us, Eric Vidorchek, and uh, Raleigh Smith. And Titus could have been um, with us, but it turns out he was out with his uh, family. And I'm glad he's okay. We hadn't heard from him for like six weeks, so I'm glad he's fine. He's just been busy, so that's a relief. Uh, so for Omni Dogs Vault on YouTube, I say peace and love, peace and love. Thank you for watching and uh, subscribe, leave a comment. I always respond to comments. Thank you to the chat. We will talk to you uh, next time. Peace and love.